What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It's me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington, and I'm here with my non-spoiler review for Stargirl on the DC Universe app. Now, of course, yeah, non-spoiler. Um... I was privy to seeing the first three episodes and we were allowed to give out social media sentiments and reviews in a non-spoilery form. And so I'm going to use this video as a whether you should or whether you shouldn't watch it when it drops on the DC Universe app. Now, also involved with that, it's going to drop on a DC Universe app. I think it debuts May 11th. But the next day after each episode debuts, you can catch it on the CW's app for free. So you'll be a day late, but you still will be able to see it. It won't cost you. So you don't necessarily have to get the DC Universe app. Uh, a lot of people thought that was confusing. I, I kind of understand why, but nonetheless. So let me give you my first off, how I felt about it when I heard about the show. I was really hesitant. Because Jeff Johns was one of the producers on it, and he's one of the creators of the character. Now, I'm not knocking Jeff Johns as a producer, and for damn sure not knocking him as a comic book writer. He's amazing at what he does. I, I really love some of his stories he's written over the years. But also, when you have comic book writers directly try to translate into live action, it's hard to... You cannot directly take those pages and make them live action because they don't work well like that all the times you have to stretch it out and make more and so you know you have green lantern you have a couple other things that was happening in the dc universe at the time but i was nervous but i'll say this once i watched star girl i enjoyed it a lot i'm not even gonna bullshit y'all i definitely dug the show one of the biggest things about it for me is it shot so well yo the cinematography is so dope on this it looks like a movie it's shot like a movie you can tell when you're watching the other uh cwdc shows when you're watching television granted we all get if you're fans of them you get ingrained into them you get inoculated by what you see and it's all in your veins almost but this one it's shot so well. The visual effects are done well. You rock with Brett Basinger as Courtney Whitmore. You rock with Luke Wilson heavily. And you're not beating over beating over the head to connect to, the, to them as characters. You're not drug there's not drug in front of you with their stories to make you say, you ain't got no choice but to like this. The way the story develops and it progresses, you can't help but to like it. You can't help but to be invested in it and to see more. Like also the JSA. We see more of the JSA. Now, we've seen them before in Legends of Tomorrow, but you get a little bit more of a taste of them as well in this. And again, with the way it's shot to see the JSA in, you know, in combination with that, it makes it such a well-done show. Now, I know I say the first three episodes are dope. I do realize that, for me, if it didn't have credits, I'd watch an hour, 20-minute movie and wouldn't have had a problem with it. But I also do realize that sometimes some shows can slip off. They can put out a little, shows can put out a little bit to, to grab you, to bring you in, and then they can fall off. And it just doesn't have to be comic book TV shows. Regular TV shows have done that as well. But I don't think that this show will do it. It has so many twists and turns and builds up in such a way where it keeps you each episode. And again, I know a lot of y'all like, yo, why would you even do this if you can't tell us about it? Like, I want to get you all excited about it. Um... And I'm not saying this as if I'm being paid by DC, I'm paid by Warner Brothers, because believe me, if I was paid by DC, I'd probably be on DC Daily, which I should be, but that's another story. I digress. But I wanted to get you all to, you know, be ready for this. A lot of people have pushback. I mean, you're going to get the same group of dudes who have pushed back against the Harley Quinn DC animated show. Let's just be realistic. You get people who have pushed back because of that. But... I, just like with the Harley Quinn animated series, which you can check out the reviews with myself and Winston A. Marshall here on the channel, I feel like with this one, you will get into it. You will actually rock with it. It has a story. It does things. There are moments, again, I can't tell you, I got to be vague as hell. Trust me, I, I don't want to be vague. There are moments where you're literally like, oh, shit. Like, there's so much action that happens, and it even gets to a point where it almost makes you shed a tear at certain things. There are things that you see in this show that we felt in emotions from Arrow, felt in emotions from The Flash, felt in emotions you might have felt from Supergirl or Batwoman for whatever reason, or even DC's Legends of Tomorrow. And also even shows you've seen on the DC Universe. Uh, for me, Doom Patrol gripped me heavily. Titans Season 2 was okay. Um, 
I don't really want to talk about Swamp Thing because it has so much potential after the first five minutes. But uh, that was it. But nonetheless, when it comes to Stargirl, the casting is done well. What you get out of the cast, it isn't anything that's forced. You get cast members who are playing their roles accordingly. I can't reveal anything because there are certain things we can't talk about yet. So I'm like, fine. And these are some big things I really want to talk about. But I want to just build that anticipation. Check this out when you get the chance. Plain and simple. I'm not going to draw this out and make this a 10, 15 minute video when I don't have to. I'll tell you, check out Stargirl when it drops. I promise you, if you're not gripped by the way it's shot and the story, something's pretty much wrong with you. It's not a bad, it's not a bad show. It's not a bad show. It is damn good. I'm not saying it's one of the greatest. I'm not going to say that because, again, three episodes in, I still have to see a full season. And then let me know if it gets renewed for season two, and then we'll have that discussion potentially. But it is a damn good show. I give a lot of credit to Luke Wilson. He really makes you rock with him more than just the comedic actor a lot of us know. You know, we see Luke Wilson, and it's always in these silly, funny roles. And you, 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 you used to that. And you do get some silly stuff out of him in this show, but you... You rock with him heavily in a serious capacity. And when certain things come out, come about, you are like, I'm with him. I want him to succeed or I want him to fail or I understand why he went this way or why he thinks like that. I get it completely. Also, you're going to be introduced to a lot of legendary DC characters that some we may have seen on TV, others we have been teased about, and some we've never had the privilege of actually seeing, you know, come to life in live action. But you're going to get those. Now, granted, there are certain ones that we know of because of casting announcements. Uh, there are some other ones we don't. So I, I, I wish I'd have did all the research to say, yo, so this is the person you know you're getting, this person you know you're getting. But I can't tell you everything. Joel McHale as Starman is dope. I didn't know I would rock with Joel McHale so heavy as a superhero to the point where I want more. Like, I was really like, yo, when I heard the cast announcement, I was like, Joel McHale as Starman? What? Again, I'll be honest. I was like, no. But after watching it, I was really for it. And I'm hoping you will be as well, all right? So, again, short video pretty much. I didn't want to drag it out. I know it's vague. I know, but I just know within a couple, like maybe two weeks, I think. Yeah, like in two weeks, you'll be able to see it. So I want to know what your thoughts are about this show upcoming in the comments below, all right? So like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell. Let me know what you think about Stargirl. Have you heard about it and probably are like, nah? Or have you been like, nah, but I might give it a chance? I want to know how you feel, all right? Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington, M R J A Y. It's down there in front of you, so you should know how to spell Washington. It should. Join my Super Villain Squad on Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. J Washington. I got some old stand-up clips of mine. I got some wrestling videos of mine. I'm a pro wrestler as well. And some interviews as well. So all of that is up there for you. If you're joining them in my squad, it's only five bucks. And I am grateful for you. All right. And subscribe here to the channel. Check out that. Check out the Mad Titan podcast where I get you caught up on everything happening in the Marvel and DC live action and cinematic universe. It is Barbershop Talk, Barbershop Talk for Nerds. It's cloned in that combo. It's very difficult to find news every single week to make a full show, but guess what? I'm giving it to y'all nonetheless. And check out Blurds in the Hood with myself and Winston A. Marshall every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live on the Blurds in the Hood YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Blurds in the Hood, B L E R D S, the letter N T H E H O O D, all right? I will holler at you guys later. Till then, take care. I'm out of here. Bye.